Hello team, Phil Saris here. I just want to take a few minutes to show you the Swivel Robot and familiarize you with some of the hardware and software features that it contains as we prepare for the upcoming school year. We're in unprecedented times for sure, but using the Swivel Robot, we can help navigate these challenging times because it can su provide support for our classroom instruction. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video, and if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. I'd like to introduce you to some of the hardware components that you'll find when you open up your Swivel case. Mine has been used before, but I'm going to show you the basic components that you'll need to, to be able to get this rolling in your classroom. First of all, there's your Swivel Robot. Your Swivel Robot has a docking station for your marker. It also has a space here that will be used to prop up your iPad or your iPhone when you're using it in class. The gray connector piece here simply slides in and clicks to allow you to dock your iPad when you're using it in class. To remove it, simply slide it to the side and pull it out if you need to be able to use an iPad with a thicker case. The marker on top simply clicks out and into place. You'll notice the three dots on the side. That is used to charge your marker in between times and it will use your base as a charging station. Your marker is equipped with a front button in the middle that we will configure to be the pause and resume tracking button. It also has a power button on the side and a record button. But like I said, we will program your robot through the app to make this your start and stop button. In the case, you'll also find your connection cord. Your connection cord works with your swivel robot to make sure that your device battery doesn't drain while you're using your swivel. You simply plug into the back and then there's a lightning port adapter on the other end to be able to connect to your iPad while it's docked in the robot. You can use your charging port here. Simply plug it in to charge. Plug this in into, into the block in the wall. You can also charge it using USB charging if you have one of those for your computer. Also in your case, you'll find a variety of adapters, including international adapters, but I usually put a lot of that stuff into this nifty little bag that they have here and store it away in the top of the case. That's the basics of the hardware for the Swivel Robot. Be sure to keep your Swivel Robot charged and make sure that your marker is attached to the top so that it can be charged as well. Your marker is not only your start and stop button, it's also your microphone for recording your voice as you're moving about the classroom. Connecting to your Swivel Robot is easy. I've got my iPad here, which is not in a case, and my Swivel Robot ready to go. As I said before, you can use these gray pieces to help connect your iPad or your iPhone into your Swivel Robot. Simply click it in and push it to the side. When I go to dock my device, I take out my marker, I turn it to the back, I connect my power cord, turn it back around. I will set my iPad into the slot. You can push it down a little bit and it'll, now it'll be wedged in there. And then I'll take my white cord and connect it into the charging port of my iPad. And now what you have is a device that is ready to go for use in the classroom. To turn on the swivel, simply hold the power button it will begin to move and if you have the app enabled and downloaded it will give you a message that says that your swivel would like to communicate with your iPad I'm going to allow that it will automatically open the app and when it automatically opens the app you see we begin a streaming of exactly what's going on so what does the swivel robot actually do that's so unique why is it called a swivel down below here, you'll see I've got my marker. And as I move my marker, you're going to see the robot follows me. And so the recording is going to follow you as you teach. One of the things that we found that's sometimes helpful for students that are learning online is sometimes they don't necessarily need to follow the teacher throughout the room if you're talking specifically about something that's on a board or on a fixed position in the room. For example, let's say you're teaching up front and you have a math problem written on the board and you're about to start talking through the solution to that math problem. One of the things that you might do while you're standing up there is you might let the robot follow you so you get up front and then you can use the middle button between the arrow keys to pause 
the robot from swiveling. So now, when I move my marker, it does not move to follow me because I want it to be on that fixed point of the board. The same could be true in science or language arts, something like that. If you've got an activity that you're doing off to the side, you have the swivel robot follow you to where you are. You press the pause button in the middle to pause it so that it locks onto that board or that activity. And so you can circulate throughout the room and yet it will still be at a fixed point up front. For example, if you're in a math lesson, it won't follow you around and be distracting to the students. If you're moving in front of the board and such, it'll be fixed on the board so that that way the students at home can follow along and see just that fixed view of the board. So here's the basic uh, functionality and the scene you're gonna see when you open up your Swivel app. A couple of important features about this screen here. Obviously, this is where you're going to see the view that the camera sees, which is, you know, we're gonna uh, you know, calibrate that so that the students can see us as we're teaching. On this screen here, you have some options. You have about one, two, three, four, five, six icons that we can click. We're not gonna click the X quite yet, but multi-camera, screencast, zoom, and this little robot icon up here are what are gonna be really important. Right now, I just wanna talk about the little robot icon up here. You can see that it says red. That's because I'm not connected to my Swivel robot. If for some reason you forget and you, you're like, I don't really remember all the steps for connecting the Swivel robot, check this out. If I tap this, it's gonna take me through exactly the steps for connecting to the Series C robot. So first, connecting it using the white cable, then turning it on by pressing and holding the power button, then turning, making sure that my marker is on. That's gonna make sure that you have audio and video going with your Swivel robot. So what are the other settings that we're gonna discuss here? Obviously, we're gonna need this zoom button here in um, just a minute. We're not really gonna use screencast and we're not really gonna use multi-camera uh, for our basic functionality. Those are some advanced features that we can talk about and you can integrate, uh, but really having that zoom some functionality is really gonna be um, quite helpful for those students who are either in the blended modality or in the fully online modality. Right now, I'm gonna X out of this because I wanna go to some of the settings. And this is what is called the library view. The library view, and as you can see, there I am uh, experimenting with my Swivel robot and some of the new features that they've incorporated. Uh, but this is uh, kind of a place where you can see the videos that you've uploaded and share from here. Obviously, you, know, you can see the share button down there below that video. But I wanna specifically explore the settings icon over here. And as we walk through some of these settings, you're gonna see that there's a bunch of things here that you may not know what they mean, but they, they might seem useful. So for example, you know, I've got the, it's got the version of the Swivel app, the Swivel-based firmware. Occasionally when you open up your Swivel, it's gonna say, and you connect, it's gonna say, we need to update the firmware. It takes all the 30 seconds to do that. And it's gonna keep track of that automatically as your iPad is connected to the internet and it's communicating with your Swivel robot. Video quality, HD versus standard digital. I wanna show you something here. So I kind of pointed out, uh, you know, we have a max video recording time. So on that uh, previous screen up in the top at the middle, it said that I had an hour and 30 minutes. Well, you can see here on the max recording time, it says one hour, 48 minutes and 24 seconds. With the settings that we're going to enable, it's going to record what you do and then automatically upload it to the cloud, not taking up any space on your device. If you um, have a device that doesn't have a lot of space on it, let's say you have a lot of photos or a lot of apps and those kinds of things, uh, your recording time is gonna be shrunken down. It's not gonna be able to record all of what you're trying to do with your swivel. So you wanna make sure to keep your device um, memory clear so that you have plenty of time and space uh, to do those videos. Where the HD versus standard digital comes in, as you can imagine, if I switch over to HD, see I have one hour and 48 minutes, 24 seconds. If I switch over to high definition, I really only have 22 minutes and 45 seconds worth of video. So depending on your device storage, you don't really wanna switch back and forth, but for our purposes, standard digital works pretty well. Um, if you find that you're having quality issues with what's coming through over the internet as your students are watching the video, be sure to communicate with me or Joel and we can help you try to figure out um, a way to make that work better for you. I'm gonna keep mine on standard digital for right now and keep going through. As you can see under this uploading menu, I have automatic upload enabled. That means as soon as I don't, not when I pause my video, but when I stop the video, it's going to stop the video, create a chunk, and then upload that to the cloud. From there is where I can share that to uh, my student Seesaw account or their Canvas account to allow them to view those videos. Storage saver. Um, that's gonna remove the videos after they've been uploaded. So those two in my mind kind of work together. Um, you may want to turn off your auto upload. Um, if you kind of want to hold it back and not release it, that would be something that could potentially help you if you kind of want to have a time delay. Uh, but usually with my class, I just keep both of those on because then it will, as soon as I'm done, it'll automatically upload 
and then uh, it'll save storage. Why might the auto upload, might, why might you wanna turn that off? Um, you might want to name it first, you might wanna have that delay like I was talking about, but having it auto upload isn't necessarily a bad thing. Down below, capture screen action bar. So obviously these are the things that um, were present. So I had screencast on, I had multi-camera on, I had swivel live with zoom. You may wanna turn off screencast and multi-camera for now so that you only have that zoom icon available to you because that's what we're gonna be using predominantly is the zoom with the swivel feature to try to live stream those classes for students that are in the hybrid model and in the online. Um, but you can also uh, you know, flip your camera around so it's not so it's using your front so it's either using your back facing or front facing camera, um, and those kinds of things can be a help. Uh, but you really don't need to mess with this section at all or use any of it because um, as long as you have that zoom enabled, that's really what's going to be helpful. Under my robot menu, the robot menu is going to control what happens with your robot and also with your marker. There's a couple settings in here that I do want to look at. So what I want to set my marker up to do is I want to make sure that my marker um, is a, has the ability to pause my video. So for example, I'm up front explaining something and I give the students something to work on. So I'm in a math lesson and I say, okay, now you try this one on your own. I want to be able to, to from my marker, pause that video, give the students time to work, and then when I get ready to do the explanation in front of the class and check their work, I turn the video back on and I say, okay, hey, we're back. So those of you that were watching at home, here, check this out. You know, you'll be able to, and that, that you'll be able to watch the rest of the explanation. And that way, it doesn't pick up my uh, ambient talking when I'm circulating through the student desk. I can kind of say, hey, we're going to pause and do one in class together. Go ahead and um, try it on your own as well. It'll pause that video, um, and so it'll pause the video feed. The way that I do that is I go to marker record button, and I'm going to set it to start, pause, resume recording. So that way. When I press the red button on the side, it's going to pause my recording and pause it in, in mid recording. And then I can remember to turn it on and pick up back that recording. Uh, one of the other things that's important uh, is this audio route down here. And right now it says built-in mic. We're gonna talk about that as soon as I connect it to the Swivel Robot and what might happen when I have various audio settings. Now that I have my, now that I have my marker on, and my swivel robot connected, I'd like to show you this screen again. Notice the audio route. So now my audio route says swivel marker, whereas before it said built-in mic. The built-in mic is on the iPad, whereas the swivel marker now is my primary source of audio. And so whoever's talking and has the swivel mic, has the marker, is gonna be the, is gonna be the one that has the microphone. It also down here tells me how much battery my primary marker has, meaning, if it's getting low, I need to be sure to plug it back into my swivel base so that it can, it can get charged up. One of the big questions you may have left is, what does it look like to do zoom and swivel simultaneously? Let's look at what that looks like through the app. When I hit the camera button on the right hand side, it's gonna pull up to that camera view with that rear facing camera. Hello everyone. And over here on the side, you're gonna see Zoom. When I click Zoom, it's gonna tell me that Swivel wants to open Zoom. I'm gonna say yes to open. Now, if you have Zoom downloaded on your device, this will pop up automatically. You have to have Zoom installed on your device that you're using with your Swivel, that is the iPad in this case, to be able to launch a meeting from there. Now. Using, using the Zoom app or the Zoom online portal is where you're gonna set up these meetings with your classes. But if I go ahead and launch a new meeting, I can start that meeting, and what you're gonna see pop up is gonna look very familiar to meetings that you've had before. It's going to ask you if, it's gonna prompt you to call over the internet if you want others to hear you. Obviously, we want others to hear us, and so we're gonna call over the internet, and that's gonna allow us to have both audio and video running at the same time. Video should be, audio should be running through my swivel marker right now. I'm gonna make sure I have that around my neck. And you're gonna notice that the interface, even though you're inside swivel, looks very much the same. Let me tilt this up so you can see me. It looks very much the same. And so your interface on swivel is gonna be almost exactly the same as it is when you use just Zoom alone. So 
you notice you've got your mute button at the top, you've got your stop video button at the top. You can keep an eye on your participants, which is what you're gonna to wanna to do, obviously to see who's there, take attendance, monitor any questions on the chat. If I hit the more button, you can see that I can pull up the chat. The chat box pops up, so if students are typing in questions or you wanna send something out as a prompt to everyone who's in the online space, you can do that. But basically, you have the full functionality of Zoom because Swivel and Zoom work really well together. So as you're monitoring this, that's what's gonna happen. And so obviously the big question is, well, how do I teach a class, but also monitor Zoom? The cool thing about the Swivel is you can set it up to be on a little tripod in front of your class. And so as you have your marker around your neck and you're walking around the classroom and you're doing things and it's following you, you can check back up front. You can check in on your Zoom kids as your students in their chairs are working. They're gonna be sitting there and basically, instead of having five or six desks out there with five or six students in them, you have you know, your window with Zoom with five or six kids sitting there and they can raise their hand um, and those kinds of things. And so you can monitor your Zoom classroom and also your uh, physical space. Is it gonna be challenging? Yes, it's gonna be challenging because you're gonna be balancing those two spaces. But the ability for Zoom and Swivel to work together like that is gonna allow you to have all those students who are working in online space and are live with you in one place so that you can check in with them for questions as you're working with the rest of your class. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video on Swivel and how it can be used in your classroom. As I said before, this year is going to be a challenging one. But with these challenges that we have, we also have great opportunity to expand our world-class education that we offer to students and families in all walks and all circumstances. I appreciate everything you're doing throughout this year to meet those needs and to rise to this occasion with poise and perseverance. As I said before also, please, if you have any questions at all, reach out and let me know and I'll try my best to support you and help you through any of the tech issues or the integration challenges that you may face. I hope you have a great day, a great afternoon, and a great school year. Go Eagles! Thank you.